The distance formula. The distance formula is really just the Pythagorean theorem, but it may be helpful to use the actual formula on this. Uh, let's look at what's happening, because if we looked at two points and we found the distance between the two points, on a graph we should be able to see that it's the hypotenuse of a right triangle. That doesn't have to make sense. Let's, let's so let's take this graph just as an example. Doesn't matter which two points we use. Let's use this point right, right here, and we want to find the distance from that point to, I don't know, something like this right here, okay? Now, what they're going to do is they're going to connect these two points, hopefully with a straighter line than the ones I just drew. But <clears throat> uh, they say find the distance between these two points. And so some people may just count lines, right? you got a one, one line, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines. It's nine lines away, therefore it is nine units distance. No. That would be the distance between the x values, though, which is good. What I mean by that is, and this, this goes back to the triangle thing. See how we kind of form a right triangle with that right there? Now, if I can find the lengths of the two legs, which I can in this case, then finding the distance between those points is just the hypotenuse value of that. And we already found that the x values is 9. They're 9 away from each other, or it's 9 units from line to line, like this, right? And then if we look at the y values, this one is a difference of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is 5 units, which gives us the length of the legs there. All right? So it's really just the distance between the x values and the y values, meaning that uh, I'm going to take the square root of the x values and the y values. But the problem is, is it's the difference between the x values. So I'm going to still square these. But now I'm going to take an x1 and minus an x2, which would give me the distance. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the y's, a y1 minus a y2. And I'm going to square that. Once I square root all that garbage, then I get the length of the hypotenuse. If you guys remember back from 980, remember we used stair steps? To find the slope so we have a rise and a run on this thing so you're just squaring the rise and the run and adding the two together all right so here's what I would do and I, I prefer to relate this to slope especially when it gives us two points that have no fractions or radicals so some of you guys remember not that everyone was in the class and not many teachers like this because it involves rainbows well double rainbows which have been known to make people cry <laughs> is that outdated now I don't know ah uh, yes that's a negative five sorry that's better maybe all right so for example I would find my rise that's from negative two to negative six that changed it went down four in my slope and then from negative 5 to negative 6 that just went down 1 all right so the formula for distance is the square root of well the x the difference in the x is squared and it's the sum of those with the difference of the y squared but I already found the differences I can see the changes in the x in the x's was a negative one and see this is the nice thing about or I guess why we don't have to choose which one is one point one and which one's point two because even if it's negative once I square this it's going to make that positive same with the y which I'm going to replace now with negative four of course when I square that I would get a positive value so negative one squared is one plus negative 4 squared is 16 and adding those two together I get the square root of 17 
Uh, given exact distance, this is the exact value. Oh boy, that didn't work out. Exact. That's better. Now it tells us to find an approximation to three decimal places, so I'm just going to use the calculator for that, which I hope you guys have because calculating this to the third decimal place would be extremely difficult. I get um, 4.123, and that's rounded because the next number is a 1. But we just wanted three decimal places. Sorry that 12, that 1, 2 looks like an R. This is the estimate. This is exact. Now on that introduction part, right, we graphed those. So if it helps you to graph those, especially when the values are whole values or integer values, then graph it. All right, so the formula, if we just looked at that way, and that's okay, is I'd have the square root of an x1 minus an x2. I want to say formally they do an x2 minus x1. I don't know why. Then I got a y1 minus a y2, and this is going to be squared, right? So the two points that we have is negative 5 and negative 2. I'm going to say that this is x1 and y1. So in the formula, I go in and I replace x1 with negative 5. And then I go in and I replace y1 with negative 2. And then uh, if that's our point 1, then down here I'd have an x1 and a y1. And the x1 value, I'm sorry, 2. What the heck? This is 2. So I'm going to replace x2 with negative 6. And that is minus a negative 6. And then I'll replace my y2 with a, well, that's another negative 6. So let's see how this turns out. I'd have, uh, this is squared, and this will be squared as well. But negative 5, and that's going to become plus. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1. And negative 2 plus 6 is 4. Now this looks a little bit different, but it's going to turn out the same. Because 1 squared is 1, and 4 squared is 17. And when I add those two, oh, that, I was... Moving too fast there. Thank you. This is 16. Oh, well, that gives us a square root of 17, which is what we got. That was the exact value. And, of course, you need to use a calculator to find the three decimal place approximation.